Well, good morning, everyone. Hope you are doing good and having a great week. To all my returning subscribers, thank you for your support. And to all our viewers and those recently subscribed, thank you and welcome to this channel. As you saw in the introduction of this video, today we'll be talking about world coins. And for this series of videos, I'll be taking you to the United Kingdom and we'll be taking a look at the very beautiful British Half Crown. Up on your screen is this coin album containing all of my British Half Crowns and Florins or two shilling coins that I've been working on to collect over several years. The half crown collection that I have runs from the years in the 1800s up until their withdrawal in the 1960s. The half crown first appeared in the British currency system in 1546 during the reign of King Edward VI. Those early coins from the 1500s to the 1700s are quite rare and extremely valuable, so I don't have those in my collection. However, the half crowns continue to be used as a denomination of British currencies up until their withdrawal on the 31st of December 1969 and they were completely demonetized on the 1st of January 1970. This was a prelude to the decimalization of the old British currencies and the introduction of the new pence, which was officially started on the 15th of February 1971. For this series of videos, I'll be sharing you the half crowns that I have categorized by the reigning monarch that you can see on the obverse of the coins. But before we get to my collection, I'd just like to put it out there that I do have a crowdfunding page on Buy Me A Coffee, the link of which you can find in the description text of my YouTube homepage. So go ahead and click on that and have a look. And I would appreciate any support that you guys can give as this channel here is not monetized. Okay, with that all done, let's go ahead and take a look at some British half crowns. In a previous video, I shared with you the coins that were issued for Queen Elizabeth II, which ran from the year 1953 to 1970. And for this video, we'll be taking a look at the coins issued for her father, King George VI, that ran from 1937 to 1951. There were actually no coins issued in 1952, but stay tuned to the end of the channel, where I'll share with you a fake coin that's gonna fill that spot. The half crowns for King George VI are also the final coins to have silver in them and for this series of coins, you will see the transition from silver to copper nickel. All coins issued for Queen Elizabeth II are all in copper nickel. All of these half crowns are minted at the Royal Mint of Tower Hill in London of the United Kingdom and for this series of coins, there are three different types. The first are being minted in silver, while the later two are minted in copper nickel. Let's start with the first coin of the series, which is the first type. And this is the first coin to feature the new portrait of King George VI. Now these coins are minted in 50% silver, they have a weight of 14.14 grams, a diameter of 32.3 mm, and a thickness of approximately 2.3 mm with a fully weighted edge. Here on the opposite, we can see this portrait here of King George VI designed by Thomas Humphrey Paget. You can see his initials HP just over here at the truncation of the bust. The portrait is facing to the left and surrounding the portrait we have this legend here in Latin which reads George the VI Del Gracia Britannarum Omnium Rex and that translates to George the VI by the grace of God, King of all the Britons. The coin is in a metal orientation, so when I flip it to the reverse, we can now see that this example is from 1937. And on the reverse, we can see this beautiful quarter shield design, which was done by George Kruger Gray. You can see his initial KG just below the shield. And flanking the shield, we can see two crowns with two interlocking G letters under the crown. Above the shield, we have this legend here, which reads in Latin, Fide Defensor, India Imperator. My apologies if I'm butchering the Latin words, but this uh, translates to Defender of the Faith, Emperor of India. Uh, just below that, we have the face value of the coin of half crown, and again, the uh, year issue of 1937. Okay, with the design and specifications all done, let me just quickly uh, show you all the coins that were issued from 1938 to 1946. And again, all these coins are 50% silver coins.
This coin from 1946 is the final coin for this silver coin series, bearing the portrait of King George VI. As you can see, most of the coins that I have for this series is actually in really nice condition. I would say uh, extra fine or higher. And in the following year, in 1947, the composition of the coin was changed to copper nickel. And here's the coin from 1947. Other than the change in the composition of the metal, the dimension of the coins remain unchanged, although these coins were only minted for two years. Here is the second coin for the Type 2, which was released in 1948. And I'd just like you to take note of the legend that's above the shield on the reverse of this coin. And here's the final type or the third type for this series of coins. These coins were minted for three years, starting from 1949. And all the features of the coins remains the same, with the exception of the legend above the coin and the initials of the designer. Now, India for this year has already gained her independence, so the monarch of the United Kingdom are no longer considered the Emperor of India, so that uh, reference on the coins has been removed. So above here, you will only see Fide a Defensor, or the Defender of the Faith, and just below the shield, the KG abbreviation for George Kruger Gray, I'm sorry, uh, George Kruger Gray has also been removed. And with this coin from 1951, we come now to the final coin of this series. As I mentioned earlier, there were no half crowns admitted for 1952 when Queen Elizabeth II took over as reigning monarch. So if you have both series of coins, you will have a gap here for the year 1952. Now a half crown was minted for South Africa in 1952 and you can probably use that coin to fill up that gap. But for me, I did manage to find uh, this fake coin here, which is dated 1952. Again, this coin is fake. I bought this from uh, eBay for just a few dollars. I thought this was uh, really cool. And this coin will make a nice filler for this gap over here for my collection of coins bearing the effigy of King George VI and Queen Elizabeth II. Uh, just to be clear, the Royal Mint did produce a single coin for 1952. That's a proof coin that's currently on display in a museum in the United Kingdom. And currently, it's the only known example of the half crown produced for 1952. Before I end this video, let me just share with you some of my thoughts about this collection. Collecting the British half crowns, in particular coins from the later years, is relatively easy. I managed to finish this collection within one year. With their high mintage numbers, all these coins are common coins. There are no rare coins within these dates. And for the copper nickel coins, you can typically get them for just one or two dollars. That's Singapore dollars. You can find them here in Singapore. While for the silver coins, the 50% silver coins, typically you can get them pretty close to melt. Of course, coins in higher grades do carry a higher premium. But if you're looking to start a coin collection, and if you're interested in collecting larger coins, uh, these uh, British half crowns do make a really nice collection for display. And with that, I guess that would do it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned to this channel as I upload the next video, which will discuss the half crown bearing the portrait of King George V, who is the father for King George VI. That series of coins ran for many years, with almost 30 different varieties being introduced for circulation. So the next video is going to be a little bit long, but I hope you guys will stay tuned and hopefully we'll learn something about that series of coins. If you do have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Otherwise, don't forget to leave me a like if you have enjoyed this content and be sure to hit that share and subscribe buttons down here if you have not done so. As always from everybody over here, y'all please take care, be safe and have a nice day.